Welcome to the Millbrook Railroad. It is the 12th of February. 35 degrees Fahrenheit, which is quite warm compared to what we've been having. And it's time to do a track inspection. I beat the track up pretty badly hauling wood pellets the other day. And it looks like nothing's loose enough to move back into place. But the track is still here, so been washed away in the spring melt. Not that that's all that uh, strong a current, but anyway. It's just stopped raining a few minutes ago. Rain in February is kind of weird, but yeah, that's what we're getting this year. Next year could be frozen all the way until May or something. I don't know. No two years are alike. Just like no two storms are alike. Now we got some movement underneath my feet here. When you're doing a track inspection, walking the ties, you're feeling with your feet, watching with your eyes, looking for stuff. And I can feel the soft spots. I should probably make note of them. That would be helpful. <laughs> but, oh well. I sort of make a mental note of them. But, anyway, we've got a a bit of a kink there. Not bad, but it'll need attention. That'll need attention. Not terribly, but it'll need some. Need need to uh, put a lot of ballast in here in the summer. And this area right here, this is where the tree hit the hit the track last year. And um, I never replaced that piece of track. But that piece of track is pulling up out of the ballast, so I have to replace that this year. And Interestingly enough, it is pulling the, the next section back up out of the ballast more than it's pulling itself up out. So, well, that's the way things interact with each other, isn't it? So this little piece here is going to be replaced um, as soon as I get the chance, as soon as it's thought out enough. Certainly not now. Now, underneath all this snow here, I'll bet you there's water running. I don't see it running, but I'll bet you there's a little bit running underneath the snow. We get a lot more to thaw, and uh, this whole field here, back up here, this whole field, actually it's uh, about... I'd say about uh, maybe 20% of the property drains to this point. Just looking around and thinking while I'm trying to come up with a figure as accurately as I can. It might be only 10%, but it's certainly about 50% about of the uh, this plateau here. Um, drains to this point. So, property goes down to that road down there. And that's quite a drop. Um, there's telephone poles down on that road, and we're up higher than them. And those telephone poles are about 50 feet tall. We're probably 10 or 20 feet above that, so we're it's probably a 60 or 70 foot drop. So, yeah, about 12 meters, maybe more, 12, 15 meters. Just 
go through here looking at uh, rail joints these joints are going to be okay for the most part I gave them more attention back in the fall than, than some of the others I think this joint here needs some attention we've got uh, a little bit of a misalignment going on here, I think. Well, at any rate, we've got mushrooming of the railheads on the ends as I'm beating this railroad up so badly. Yeah, I should probably decrease my axle loading a little bit. The light rail isn't handling it very well this year. But yeah, it's been down for 10 years. 10 years of heavy use. It's uh, yeah, even uh, even a class one railroad gets surfaced and resurfaced at least once in 10 years, maybe more. I don't know their schedules for doing that sort of thing. But here we're coming up on the worst section of the whole railroad right now. Uh, we have to do some wholesale tie replacement up through here. Um, a lot of our ties are rotten. Most of our ties are untreated up through here. So I have to come through here, replace rail, replace ties. I have some rail that I can put in here. I'm going to upgrade the rail, I think. Um, I, I certainly plan to anyway. Good Lord willing, the creek don't rise. Um, I just have to get some tie plates because I'm upgrading to Culp Rail, which is 825 thousandths of an inch deep. That is this stuff here. So this is what we're going to re-rail this section down here with. Certainly looks a little nicer. Well, we've got tie plates and everything. But I have to call it Peter Nusky and Get an order of tie plates in. He's not online, so you have to call him whenever you want to buy something from him and send him a check. And then he sends you what you want. Kind of old fashioned that way. Some things are good like that, you know? Like Precision Steel Card works almost that way, although he has a website. So I've got some. We've got some areas where the ballast has subsided, and ballast is almost non-existent, so finally thawing out around the corner by the chicken coop here. Hello girls, and rooster. Oh, we've got a chickadee over here, a bunch of chickadees over here on the other side of the track. But if I hold my hand out with a bunch of feed in it, somebody's going to fly down and eat from my hand. And it won't be a chicken. Alright, so... You can see which track I've plowed most recently. Not a whole lot to inspect through here. The culp rail is just stable. It doesn't need as much maintenance. But you know, if you're willing to put more work into it and you, you're really working on a budget, then this lighter stuff will do it. This uh, lighter one inch scale rail will, will handle most of what the average backyard railroader is gonna put it through. I would not consider myself the average backyard railroader unless the average backyard railroader starts uh, running all winter long and hauling freight. <laughs> I don't see that happening anytime soon. Although maybe it wouldn't be a bad thing. More people building railroads in their backyards brings the price of the stuff down. But anyway, that's our track inspection for the day. Well, we should probably take a look at the points up here. Yeah. So, this frog needs to be replaced. And we have some bad rail in this switch here. 
points are probably okay, but I'll be rebuilding this switch and this switch here. This switch is pretty badly beat up, as you can see. Yeah, I, I think the FRA would have a problem with that if uh, this were something they were concerned with. But they're not, so... I'm aware of it. I run over it accordingly, and... That's all there is to it. Let's see, are the points loose? Yeah, points are loose. I'm gonna have to do something, um, maybe put a steel bar across here. Hold the points at the right distance. And I need to replace this rail, which is pretty badly wore out. And this one here. So I have to rebuild both switches. There's a lot of stuff this railroad needs. So, um, oh, maybe I should have a call out for volunteers or something, huh? Well, that'll be uh, in April. Because it's still far too frozen to do any work today. Well, no trains today, so if you're looking for trains, then I apologize. We're not running any, but I uh, hope you enjoyed this track inspection anyway. It's about as minimal as uh, you can get. A lot of people call this minimal gauge when you do uh, a job of real work on a small railway like this. And Yeah, minimal gauge, minimal maintenance. <laughs> oh well, enough of the bad jokes. If you liked this video, please hit that like button. Please share it, subscribe. I'm gonna grab a shovel and knock that down before it falls on my head. It's so warm out, it's almost tropical. I'm gonna have a barbecue later. <laughs>